I just think it was a gift from God being able to um, get along and um, relate to children. And I knew that was a field I always wanted to work in. And especially, I mean, as soon as you get involved with helping kids in the hospital, I think your whole life changes because it's something that not everybody gets to see. And for me, it was the best, it's the best helping, putting smiles on sick kids' faces. I volunteer um, in the Child Life Department at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. So I switch between the intensive care unit and the pre-op unit. And it's the best thing I could have ever been involved in. And when I'm not doing that, I am doing weekend retreats at Camp Boggy Creek, which is a um, free camp for chronic Ill, chronically ill children. And when I'm not volunteering my time, I'm usually at the beach or the dog park with my nine-month-old golden doodle bow. I want to become a child life specialist at preferably Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital, but I want to um, work on the oncology floor and um, work with getting more government funding for childhood cancer research. They only get 4% of government funding, and to me that is unfair because that's our future. Kids are our future, and if you give them 4% of government funding, you can't really save the future. My parents met at Johns Hopkins and my mom said that she had a couple friends from that were in the child life department and she said Gabby I think you, sh you would really be you would fall in love with this field and you would do an excellent job so that's when I started the volunteer process and I said mom like you are completely right like this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I would say that the two biggest influences, one being my mom by far. If anyone has met my mom, you know she's the strongest woman that's ever walked through this earth. I mean, she can encounter anything and she'll survive it. And I just hope, pray one day I will be as strong as she is. And um, the second one is my sister because <laughs> she, um, she just fights for what she wants and she's determined. And ever since I was little, I always wanted to be like her. I wanted to dress like her. And um, yeah, she is just achieving all of her goals and her dreams, and I hope I can do the same too. So tennis is funny because I don't think a lot of people know that it's such, it is a team sport, but it's such an individual sport. So um, being able to be close with Jesus and to ask him for any, like patience or um, support on the court is, Something that's really special to me, um, patience is a very key role in the sport of tennis, so that is one thing that I ask God to give me before every match is patience and strength to be able to complete a tennis match and to hopefully win. And getting to know Jesus more um, through tennis has helped me um, not be afraid of losing because that was my number one thing was, oh my goodness, I don't want to lose, but God is going to love us if we lose or if we win. I also work at All Saints of the School Church down, downtown Lakeland and they were trying, I work in the children's area and they were trying to figure out a way for the kids to do something but by themselves so not like a canned food drive so where the parents have to do something. So I came up with the idea, well how about we write kids notes that are in the hospital and I'll take them to them. And so they loved that idea and I was at practice one day and I said, coach, like we're making kids, we're making cards for sick kids in the hospital. Like, do you think that would be something that we could do as a team? And he absolutely loved it. So we started doing that. And then we also started writing notes to a little girl named Kate and she's three and she's from Lakeland. And she just got diagnosed a couple months ago with stage four neuroblastoma. So we really started focusing on making cards for Kate because she loves cards and um, she's the sweetest little girl ever. And so, yeah, that's kind of how it started. And, We'll continue it as long as I'm here, hopefully. <laughs> well, I was, when I was 18, I was diagnosed with a very rare autoimmune disease, which is called Bichette's. I am one in less than 20,000 in the U.S. that has it. 
So that I think is my biggest adversity I've ever been faced against because my very first outbreak of it, I went to doctors and doctors and doctors and nobody, they were diagnosing me with the wrong thing. Nobody knew, really knew what it was. And I was just praying to God, like, please God, I will do anything if you get these doctors to like give me the right answers so that I can be treated how I need to be treated and for it to go away. But I, um, a couple months went by and my pediatrician, my pediatrician called me and he was like, I think I know what you have. And he sent me off to the Mayo Clinic and that's finally where I was diagnosed with facials. And from then on, my life has been changed. And I remember just praying to God, please God, like there has to be something wrong with me. And that no, I'm not just making this up. Like there is something wrong with me. And finally he had answered all my prayers and I got everything I needed. So this isn't fair, it literally crosses my mind, I think a thousand times a day whenever I'm in the middle of an outbreak, like why me? But I mean, you can't, I was born like that, so you can't have that mindset. But that's another reason why I love Southeastern so much is because the teachers are so understanding and they they know that I tell them I have this problem and they, they take care of everything that needs to be taken care of. And I have a great support system uh, through tennis and through my family. I mean, my best friends are the people on my tennis team, so. They support me in everything I do and um, yeah.